The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Buccaneer Amphibian XA. The Buccaneer XA is a single-seat amphibious ultralight that was offered in kit form. The Buccaneer XA was designed by Jack Hutchinson and Bruce Pemberton and originally manufactured by Highcraft Aero Marine, then Advanced Aviation, and finally Cuthan Aircraft. Bob Bailey designer and manufacturer of the Dragonfly tow plane and several ultralight gliders was also involved in the early design and production. The Buccaneer XA amphibious ultralight aircraft was first introduced in 1984. It was the first amphibious single hull ultralight to enter the market. It featured bolt-together aluminum tubing for the main frame fuselage, with a center-mounted fiberglass hull bolted to it. The wings, tail section, ailerons and rear fuselage were also constructed using bolt-together aluminum tubing covered in Dacron sail cloth. The hull and two wing sponsors are fiberglass. All but early models use standard three-axis, stick and rudder controls, in a taildragger, pusher configuration. Power was originally supplied by a Rotax 277, 28 horsepower, two-stroke engine. Later models were powered by the Rotax 377, 447 and 503 engines. The craft uses a center-mounted stick, with a left-hand throttle. Retracting the gear involved, grabbing the gear leg and hooking the wheel onto a gear support bar. You reverse the process to lower the gear. Climb rate on the XA with a Rotax 447 engine was 750 feet per minute, crews came in at 55 to 60 miles per hour, the stall speed was 25 miles per hour. If considering purchasing a used Buccaneer Amphibian XA it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested. The airframe, wings, landing gear, and the control systems, be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the retail value of a used Buccaneer Amphibian XA from the 1980s to be between $5,000 and $7,500. For a troubleshooting report on the Buccaneer XA, visit www.ultralightnews.com. The Ultralight Flyer also recommends that the buyer contact Aero Adventure at www.c-planes.com, to inquire about any modifications or updates, that the factory might recommend. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. 
Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the award-winning, CGS Hawk. The CGS Hawk was designed by Chuck Slusasik in 1982, and introduced at the Sun N Fun Convention, held in Lakeland, Florida. By conducting a survey at a previous show Chuck learned that pilots were looking for an affordable, enclosed, strut brace, three-axis control ultralight, with flaps, in a tricycle gear, with a steerable nosewheel, in a pusher configuration. The Hawk kit which is now available in both a tricycle gear and taildragger, uses bolt and rivet together aluminum tube construction and is built around a uniquely curved main boom tube. The original kits took between 350 and 400 hours to build. It can be built in as little as a single car garage, using common hand tools. A small air compressor and rivet gun are suggested. Once the airframe and wings are completed they are covered in sewn envelopes of Dacron sail cloth. The craft features zippered on doors, which can be removed. The CGS Hawk features standard stick and rudder controls, with a flap handle located just above and to the right of the pilot's head. Power was originally supplied by the Kiuna 440 engine but later models used the Rotax 377 and 447 engines. Current ultralight models are using a single-cylinder hearth engine. Cruise comes in at around 55 miles per hour. It has an honest climb rate of between 600 and 750 feet per minute, and stall with flaps can be as low as 22 miles per hour. A number of float systems can be retrofitted to the Hawk, as can skis. Other options include a ballistic parachute system, and an in-cabin heater. If considering purchasing a used CGS Hawk it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested, the airframe, wings, landing gear, and the control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used CGS Hawk from the 1980s to be worth between $3,500 and $5,500. The ultralight flyer also recommends that the buyer contact CGS Aviation at www.cgsaviation.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Fisher FP-202 Koala. The Fisher FP-202 Koala was designed by Mike Fisher and Wayne Ison in the early 1980s. It was an early ultralight that actually looked like an airplane, unique in the days of flying spiders made of tubing and sailcloth. All wood construction makes it easy to build and repair, as the building process is very similar to that of building wood model aircraft. Designed for US Part 103 ultralight rules, the Koala is the most popular design of the 14 models Fisher Flying Products offers. It is modeled after the J3 Cub and offers a nostalgic aircraft look. The Koala has 120 square feet of wing area. It has a 254 to 300 pound empty weight. And an over 500 pound gross weight. And is designed for engines up to 60 horsepower. It has a very narrow fuselage and many builders will add a few inches to allow a more comfortable fit. With the Fisher FP-202 Koala, the standard for personal aircraft has been redefined, but not redesigned. 
It is a strikingly faithful reproduction of one of the most popular aircraft ever built. Fisher Flying's Koala makes the dream of owning a classic flying machine a reality. Proven geodetic wood construction gives the FP202 its strength, proven Fisher ingenuity gives the plane its appeal. A totally enclosed cockpit provides a comfortable environment for the pilot, while a variety of instruments and standard aircraft controls make for safe fun flying. The craft uses all wood geodetic construction covered in standard aircraft covering materials. Standard features include an enclosed cockpit with removable side panels, large pneumatic tires, a steerable tailwheel, 5-gallon fuel tank, fiberglass cowl and full-scale plans. The standard kit takes about 500 hours to build while the quick build kit saves about 300 hours of build time. If considering purchasing a used Fisher FP202 it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be completely removed and the airframe, wings, landing gear area, and control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used Fisher FP202 Koala to be $3,500 to $6,500. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Hyperlite SNS-8. The Hyperlite SNS-8 was originally designed by Sorrel Aviation, at the request of Ron Shetler the first Canadian distributor of Rotax aircraft engines. It was originally designed to be powered by the Rotax 277 single-cylinder, 28-horsepower two-stroke engine using a Heger belt reduction drive. In truth the SNS-8 is a smaller version of the Sorrel Hyperbipe. The SNS in the name stands for Sorrel Negative Stagger. The SNS-8 is offered in kit form. It features a two-piece 4130 welded steel fuselage, which can be separated for ease of storage. The aircraft can be covered in pre-sewn Dacron sail cloth envelopes or by the use of standard aircraft covering materials. Building times are in the 150 to 400 hour range, with the conventional fabric covering taking longer to complete. The craft is a taildragger, staggerwing, biplane, in a tractor configuration. It uses standard stick and rudder three-axis controls, with full-span flaperons on the lower wing, a center-mounted stick and left-hand throttle. For the best performance a Rotax 377, or 447 two-stroke engine is recommended. Other engines that have powered the Hyperlite SNS-8 are Hearth, Kawasaki and half VW conversion. Climb rate comes in at around 750 feet per minute, cruise is 55 to 65 miles per hour, stall comes in at 27 miles per hour. If considering purchasing a used Hyperlite SNS-8 it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested, the airframe, wings, landing gear, and the control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used Hyperlite SNS-8 from the 1980s to be worth between $4,500 and $6,500. The Ultralight Flyer also recommends that the buyer contact Thunderbird Aviation at www.thunderbirdaviationme.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend.
dinner this morning. Um, so I wrote back to all your questions to be answered in that form. The early 1980s featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Kolb Firestar. Homer Kolb's aircraft designs are one of the most time-tested and proven designs on the ultralight and experimental market today. In the early 80s he produced the Ultrastar Ultralight and then in 1984 introduced the Firestar which is still available today, in a number of versions from Kolb aircraft. The Firestar is a high-wing, strut-braced, taildragger in a pusher configuration. It comes as an assembly kit taking about 350 hours to build. The rivet and bolt together aluminum tubing kit can be built with common hand tools in a single car garage. But a small air compressor and air riveter are recommended. Once construction is completed the Firestar is then covered in standard aircraft covering materials. Power is supplied by the Rotax 377, 447, and 503 aircraft engines, but a variety of engines from 28 to 55 horsepower have been used. The Firestar features standard stick and rudder controls, with a center-mounted stick, and a left-hand throttle. It has a steerable tailwheel, three-quarter span ailerons and is one of the best performing aircraft on the ultralight market when using a Rotax twin-cylinder air-cooled engine. The Firestar climbs out at over 800 feet per minute, cruises in the 55 to 65 miles per hour range, and stalls in the 25 mile per hour range. The Firestar also makes an excellent float plane. Like all of the Kolb aircraft designs the Firestar has folding wings for ease of storage and transport. If considering purchasing a used Kolb Firestar it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested, the airframe, wings, landing gear, and the control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used Kolb Firestar from the 1980s to be worth between $4,500 and $6,500. The Ultralight Flyer also recommends that the buyer contact Kolb Aircraft at www.kolbaircraft.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Lazair Ultralight, by Ultra Flight. If considering purchasing a used Lazair Ultralight it is the Ultralight Flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric, propellers, airframe, wings, landing gear, and control systems, and engines be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engines is unknown it is recommended that the exhausts be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the Ultralight Flyer would estimate the resale value of a used Lazare Ultralight to be between $3,500 to $6,500. 
The Lazare single-seat ultralight aircraft was designed by Dale Kramer and the late Peter Corley, and produced by Ultra Flight Incorporated out of Port Colborne, Ontario, Canada. It entered the market in the early 1980s, and was sold in kit form. The kits took between 500 and 1,000 hours to build as they were basically a raw materials kit. The fuselage and tail section uses aluminum tube, bolt and rivet together, construction. The wings feature, aluminum D-cell, construction with styrofoam ribs. The wings and tail section are covered in a mylar or tedler fabric. The Lazare is a high-wing, strut-braced, tricycle gear. Taildragger, in a tractor configuration with an inverted V-tail, equipped with rudivators. The Lazare is available in several different series as a single place ultralight, the last being the Series 3. Power was originally supplied by two modified Pioneer chainsaw engines of approximately 5.5 horsepower each. The Series 2 and 3 models use two, single-cylinder, 9.5 horsepower Rotax engines. The engines are mounted on the leading edge of the wings. The Series 3 Lazare features a wider landing gear, a conventional center-mounted joystick, jury struts and tow brakes. The Lazare Series 2 and Series 3 ultralights made great float planes and could be found throughout cottage country in Ontario. Climb rate on the Lazare Series 2 and 3 ultralights is approximately 450 to 500 feet per minute, cruise comes in at between 35 and 45 miles per hour. Stall is around 25 miles per hour. The Lazare has a very solid group of owners and builders in both the US and Canada. Problems have been reported with both the Pioneer chainsaw engines and Rotax engines. There are several troubleshooting reports on the Lazare at www.ultralightnews.com. Parts available from www.newlazare.blogspot.com. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Phantom Ultralight aircraft. When the Phantom was introduced to the ultralight market at Sun & Fun in 1982, it won the Best New Design Award. Not only for its good looks and performance but for its structural integrity. It was touted as having been tested to plus 9 and minus 6.6 Gs. The Phantom is a kit built from anodized aluminum tubing, bolted and riveted together. The wings, tail surfaces and ailerons are covered in Dacron sail cloth envelopes. The Phantom uses a double-surfaced wing for better crosswind control and handling. Original power was supplied by a Kawasaki 440 engine with a belt drive, this was updated to a Rotax 447 using a belt drive, and then a Rotax 447 with a gear drive. The Phantom is a wire-braced, high-wing, tricycle gear ultralight aircraft in a tractor configuration, with a pilot pod and a steerable nosewheel. Controls a standard stick and rudder with full span ailerons. The Phantom has a left hand throttle and right hand joystick. Cruise speed on the Phantom Ultralight is between 55 and 60 miles per hour. Climb comes it at around 700 feet per minute, stall speed comes in at approximately 25 miles per hour. If considering purchasing a used Phantom, it is the Ultralight Flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric, airframe, wings, landing gear, and control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. 
At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used Phantom from the 1980s to be worth between $4,500 and $6,500. The Ultralight Flyer also recommends that the buyer contact Phantom Aero at www.phantomiro.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend. It is our understanding that they can also supply some parts for the Hurricane and Avenger line of ultralight aircraft, which are very similar in design. This series of short video clips gives information on the Ultralight Flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built, which were produced in the early 1980s. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Quicksilver MX. The Quicksilver MX entered the market in the early 1980s, it was originally designed by Jack Hutchinson for IPA aircraft as a single-place weight shift control ultralight. The Quicksilver MX is a high-wing, tri-cycle gear, two-axis control aircraft in a pusher configuration. It was the first ultralight to be mass-marketed and mass-produced. The bolt-together assembly kit required no manufacturing of parts by the builder, all fabrication was done at the factory. The kit took between 60 and 80 hours to assemble, using common hand tools, and could be built in as little as a one-car garage. The Quicksilver was the first ultralight kit on the market to come with a very comprehensive assembly manual, with all of the AN bolts and anodized tubing clearly marked and supplied on shrink-wrapped packaging boards. Originally power was supplied by the Cayuna 440 engine but this power plant was later updated to the Rotax 377 and then Rotax 447 engine. The Quicksilver MX uses stick and rudder two-axis controls, with the stick connected to the elevator and rudder. The rudder pedals are connected to spoilerons on top of the wing. The craft uses a right hand stick and left hand throttle. One of the unique features of the Quicksilver MX is that the pilot can deploy both spoilerons at the same time by depressing the rudder pedals, this kills the lift on the wings and allows the aircraft to get into very short runways. At the time of production the Quicksilver MX was the market leader for ultralight aircraft, and the Quicksilver line of aircraft still leads the world in ultralight aircraft style kits today. The Quicksilver MX is one of the safest, most fun flying ultralight aircraft I have ever flown, and I highly recommend it. The ultralight flyer rates the Quicksilver MX, A+, when powered by a Rotax engine, with good fabric, an airworthy propeller and a low-time engine. Estimated resale value in the year 2020 is $3,500 to $5,000 for a used not abused MX. If considering purchasing a used Quicksilver MX it is the Ultralight Flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested and the wires, landing gear and reduction drive be thoroughly inspected. For a troubleshooting report on the MX, visit www.ultralightnews.com. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the Ultralight Flyer would estimate the value of a used not abused Quicksilver MX is $3,500 to $5,000.
The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the RANS S4 and S5. The RANS Coyote single place ultralights were designed by Randy Schlitter, owner of RANS Aircraft. Randy is one of the most prolific designers of ultralight, experimental and light sport aircraft that I know of. The quality, and finish of his aircraft and kits has to be seen to be appreciated. The RANS line of ultralight aircraft were first introduced at Sun & Fun 1983. They are available in both a tricycle gear and a tail dragger. The craft are both high-wing, strut-braced, tractor aircraft. They both feature the same bolt and rivet together aluminum tube construction, covered in Dacron sail cloth envelopes. Kit assembly time was between 100 and 125 hours, and RANS manuals, and instructional building materials, leads the industry in completeness. No special tools, or jigs are required to build the planes, and they can be built in a single car garage. Both the RANS S4 and S5 feature standard stick and rudder three-axis controls with flaps. They have a center-mounted stick and left-hand throttle. Power is supplied by the Rotax 277, 377, or 447 engine. When equipped with a Rotax twin-cylinder engine climb comes in at 750 feet per minute. Cruise speed is 55 to 60 miles per hour, and stall with flaps 25 miles per hour. Both planes are enclosed cockpit, but can be flown with the doors removed. Either model can be fitted with floats or skis and in-cabin heat and ventilation is available. If considering purchasing a used RANS S4 and S5 it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested, the airframe, wings, landing gear, and the control systems be thoroughly inspected. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used RANS S4 and S5 from the 1980s to be worth between $4,500 and $6,500. The ultralight flyer also recommends that the buyer contact RANS aircraft at www.rans.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend. The early 1980s, featured one of the fastest growing segments of aviation, that of ultralight aircraft. Over 40 years have passed, with many of the aircraft introduced during this time, still safely flying today, and being offered for sale on the used ultralight market. This series of short video clips, gives information on the ultralight flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Team Mini Max. In 1984 while attending the Sun & Fun convention, I watched as a little single-seat ultralight aircraft, took to the air in some very gusty, cross-wind conditions. Conditions that had grounded most of the other ultralight aircraft on the field. That aircraft was a Mini Max designed by Wayne Eisen of Eisen Aircraft. The Mini Max is available in a number of models, ultralight versions, experimental versions, and now a two-place version. All of them feature all wood geodetic construction. Build time is between 250 and 350 hours. The Mini Max can be built in as little as a single car garage, with no special tools or equipment needed. Construction is very similar to that used in a model aircraft kit. The Mini Max line of aircraft have a very strong following on the net. Thousands of kits have been sold and are flying throughout the world. The Mini Max uses standard stick and rudder three axis controls, in a tractor, tail dragger configuration. It has a center mounted stick and a left hand throttle. The craft can be equipped with a windscreen or a complete canopy. 
The Minimax Ultralight is generally powered by the Rotax 277, 377 or 447 engine. The Zenoa two-stroke engine and half VW engines have also been used. The latest models have been using the Hearth line of two-stroke engines. When powered by a twin-cylinder Rotax engine climb rate comes in at over 800 feet per minute, cruise is an honest 55 to 60 miles per hour. Stall speed is roughly 25 miles per hour. If considering purchasing a used Team Mini Max it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be removed from the airframe and wings and that they be thoroughly inspected. Other areas of inspection include the landing gear and control systems. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used Team Mini Max from the 1980s to be worth between $3,500 and $6,500. The ultralight flyer also recommends that the buyer contact Team Mini Max at www.teammini-max.com to inquire about any modifications or updates that the factory might recommend.